Well, that was a thrilling game as well. Um, we saw a lot at the end there, kind of killing the clock. I'm really not sure what we're going to see in this game now. I think we've got the, the, the one-ranked team versus the four-ranked team based off the playoffs. Sean, what are your expectations? Yeah, I think we've um, kind of talked about earlier that, you know, maybe Rise, Rise come in as a favourite and Hustle will come in, you know, as that sort of underdog is the, you know, they're going to, they're probably going to have to, you know, come up with some good plans, come up with something to stifle Rise early. I think what we've seen throughout, if you can create a sort of a tight game, a close game, not don't let a team build up ahead of steam. If you can slow things down, you know, you turn the games into one goal, two goal games. And that's where, you know, I think that's where Hustle can, can, uh, can make their big impression, to be honest. They've, um, just looking at their team, they've got Will Hardy back, who was absent from the morning game. So he's gone into their roster. So I think that's a really good improvement for them from what they put in in the play in this morning. I think, you know, he'll he'll definitely add something to it. Um, and I'm just looking, you know, I'm just looking forward to a really good competitive match. So um, let's get going. Yeah, they've got nothing to lose coming into this game. Either, you know, uh, Hustle have really got it all to kind of hustle for and make it their own. Um, we've got this first face off. We've got Chris Hockey and Paul Chapman going down at the X or at the stripe. And um, I think we're pretty much going to get straight into this one, Sean. Yeah, we're going to get straight to it. Again, another one, Chris Hockey, not here for that first weekend, but has come straight into this Rise team for this weekend now on the face. And it's a really good addition to their to their roster as well with just on bench as sub at the moment. But Ryan Huns has come into the Rise squad as well. And, you know, everyone knows about his abilities, you know, England international. He's somebody who's made that Rise team even stronger, not that they needed to be. Yeah, they, they really pack a punch, the Rise. Um, again, I think it's, it's about them bringing... We saw a lot of Alex Russell previous weekends, um, and we really saw him take ownership. But the, the likes of Prescott, uh, Pomfret back out of concussion, and as you mentioned, Ryan Hunt's really coming into the mix really gives them a lot of firepower. I think the big thing for them is actually how they utilise those those guys forward, but also stopping the ball at the back. So, a couple of uh, failed attacks there. We saw Dan Jones had the first shot for Hustle, went wide, we've just had uh, Rise giving up the ball now, and uh, Hustle straight back into the attack. Bring it forward, Toby Kirkland there into Dan Jones. I think Dan Jones was someone from, you know, the playing games earlier who, um, you know, really kind of almost tried to, stood, tried to stand up for Hustle and he made quite a good, uh, good few number of plays. He's probably going to have to have a really good game again today. I'm happy to stand corrected on this one, Sean, but I think this might be the first game we've had where there's not been a goal in the opening minute and a half. Yeah, we're kind of a bit quiet. We're kind of like, what's... Uh, What's going on here? The teams have, like I say, I think the late, later, later on you get in the day, the games start to slow down a bit. The games become more a bit of a tactical battle. So we've got Pomfret hung up here at X. Obviously conscious of the shot clock. Class finish though from Alex Russell though, making his cut. Pomfret picked him out perfectly. We might see some settled attack here. No, great finish, Dan Flisk. Dan Flisk, I think he's somebody who's really impressed across the two weekends. He's somebody who stands out as one of the younger players um, across the weekend. But you know, he sort of really made himself notice, sort of taking every opportunity that he gets out there, and he's really uh, caught the eye. Yeah, he's he's one of the England, England under twenty one guys. I think he's one of the guys who's really benefited from the extra year. Um, after the COVID delays and that sort of thing. But Dan Flisk is really maturing into a fantastic lacrosse player. And there we go. There's the sixes coming to life. Three goals in a minute and uh, the game's on its way. And here's Will Hardy in attack. Cuts inside. Finish goes wide. We've not mentioned it yet. The two goalkeepers. So we've got we've got Will Baxter and Hal Duo Beng. Obviously the, the two senior England goalies. But last time we saw these guys go head to head, they really put on a show. Yeah, and the, you know, these these are the best goalies that we've, you know, we've got around here. You know, they represent England and they're people who change the game for their size. They're the people who, you know, they lead from the back almost in that they, you know, they keep their teams well marshaled. They come up with big saves and 
they are going to be absolutely influential here again today. Baxter in the playing game earlier, you know, was crucial in Roy's getting that win over Swift. He puts the pressure on the attackers all the time. The big thing I notice with Will Baxter, he demands so much of the guys in front of him, equally to the amount that he demands of himself, standing in between the pipes. Um, and I think actually as a guy who's stood in front of, of goalkeepers before, who really communicate and demand, it actually raises your game. And I think that's what he does for, for Rise. You know, we spoke a lot about the Rise firepower, but actually him stood in between, in, in, you know, in, in the crease for those, you know, in, in the goal, he makes a huge difference. And for a team, it's really good to have someone like that because, like you say, you know, the format demands players to play attack and defence. You can't, you know, there are probably guys out here who, you know, back in a tennis side, they don't really trap that much into that defensive third. They don't, you know, they don't really, they don't really get involved in that. And to have somebody that they know between the pipes is somebody who they can rely on, is somebody there to direct them. That's really great for those guys that, you know, might like find themselves on defence where it's a bit of a, an unnatural position for them. So we're seeing first extra man of the day, or for the, the game, should I say. And this is where we really might see some of that rise firepower. Absolutely on cue. Ryan Huns, step down. Yeah, Ryan Huns there on his left-hand side. You know, you almost... Everyone just stepping back to sort of make them take the outside shot. But Ryan Huns is somebody who's going to be like, well, not, not um, uh, really bothered about that outside shot. I'm going to take it and back myself. Absolutely. So they're just trying to... Uh, work out the, the clearing of the bench. Short on time. Oh, I think that was very close. Yeah, just missed the shot clock there, unfortunately, for uh, Will Shirt. It's a nice little move inside as well, but yeah, just brought up by the shot clock. As you say, um, everyone gets 30 seconds in possession of the board. It's a 30 second shot clock, so the impetus is on teams to move it quickly. And that's some of the fine margins we talk about. You know, that goal going in with, you know, minimal tech time left on the shot clock. That could be a real big thing, especially when we're seeing these one goal games. So some Jones strong D. I, yeah, yeah I, I think there was a foul. I think that was fair. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely something in there. And I think they, they got it eventually. Uh, you know, I think Dan Jones, like we spoke in the previous game, you know, buying fouls for his team, he, he was really strong in, in, in possession there. Um, and now we, we saw Rice score on their first man up. What are we going to see from Hustle in his first man up? Rice well, just trying to get themselves in shape. Just over two minutes to go in our first quarter. Rice with a three goals to one lead. So everyone's kind of running this open set. Uh, it's 3-2. Um, we'll see what they run, whether they run a, something off ball or if they run a rotation, we'll see. It's kind of like your traditional 3-3, three, three, trying to really, you know, stretch the guys across the top, see what they can actually create. Yeah, go down as another, another early wasted opportunity for Hustle and uh, something that they're going to, you know, have to be mindful of here if Rise go up the other end and see off there. I say, just looking now, uh, you know, obviously early in the game, probably not going to put it on that much, but um, Hustle not, well, Hustle weren't attacking the ball, but they've been called for not, I think they didn't take the ball into the opposing half. Within, yeah, it was like an over and back or something. Within, a, within, I think it was within eight seconds, did they take the ball mm, back? I'm really not sure. We're a little bit what we did, sure. What, hey, what we Coach do now. Cara is, uh, yeah, he's questioning it. Well, whilst they're doing that, Sean, I think, you know, we, we spoke again about like the margins and the shooting percentage and that sort of thing in the first game. And I think obviously it, it rings true in this one. These teams so far have probably taken the same number of shots, but that's not reflected on the score on the scoreboard. So I think, you know, if you're Sam Patterson talking and looking at his, his hustle team, you're asking them to take the shots in the right locations to really actually, you know, make a goalkeeper like Will Baxter work for that. Have we worked it out yet? No, it's still holding on. Yeah, I think um, we noticed in the last game, obviously it was early there, but Roy's were the man down, but um, Hustle weren't out to press the ball really high. They weren't getting into the faces early. And I think that shows between, you know, maybe where they think that they're going to excel. It's probably maybe not in pressing and squeezing hard, but, you know, in sort of trying to sit back and let the game, you know, last out, trying to run the game long. Well, the referees have finally made a decision and have awarded the ball to Rise, who are going to go and attack with Ryan Huns on Will Hardy. What a good, good bit of one-on-one -on -one defence. 
Russell behind, got Huns coming through. Standing up well, clock's running out, but his <laughs> sniped finish from Ryan Huns is just absolutely pinch perfect. In a lot of ways, you look at the rise in the, in the, last, in the last weekend, that was kind of something they were missing, that little bit of something extra in their attack. Um, a lot of stuff came through Russell in the previous week and then, and then you know, they're, they're now sharing that workload between them and I can tell you those guys are absolutely thriving off working together. Yeah, like you say, you know, it sort of spreads spreads your attacking options and it also means the defence, you know, they're thinking about the two-pronged you know, the uh, two -pronged attack now, they can't just sit on one man. That was a fair look to be honest, uh, Josh Simpson, Pink coming through X, looking to feed up field. Uh, unfortunately, it ended up being the turnover and we see what Hustle can do in this last 10 seconds. Did they know on the clock? Let's get a shot off, guys. With the feed from Dan Jones been intercepted by Russell. He's trying to go. Time is running down. He did get the shot away, but Dwayne Ben was there to stop. And we're going into the end of the first quarter. Rise leading four goals to one. I'll be honest, Sean, I'm not sure. You know, I think that's kind of the first quarter we'd expected. Uh, you know, rise with the firepower that we've spoken about, really kind of asserting themselves. But if you hustle, I think you've got to be saying, we've, we've got opportunities here, guys. We can actually, you know, we can, we can definitely represent ourselves better than one on the scoreboard in that first eight minutes. Um, and I'm, and I'm, I'm absolutely certain that Sam will be talking to the guys and trying to encourage them to work, go and express themselves in this game. Instead of thinking at the outset, you know, they've, they've got nothing to lose. Let's get a, you know, let's go out and play these guys, you know, um, you know, step for step. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Like, you know, you know, if I'm sure, if we, you know, if we looked at the shot count from that, if we looked at the possessions, they had, you know, they had equal chances. They also had some very good chances. We saw just at the end there, Dan Fliss come in through one on one, but Baxter's just there to make the the big reaction save. And I think you just have to, you know, you just have to go right. We are not that far away. There was, there's, you know, there was almost no reason why they couldn't be tied here. There's no reason why they couldn't have got four goals there. I think it's just that thing that they can come out now, maybe try and take the first goal, chip away at it, chip away at it, and see, you know, if you can, if you can try and find some cracks in this defence. So interestingly, Will Baxter is stayed in his crease. I think this is something that he's done himself. He knows what his responsibility is in his team, and it, you know, what, they'll be talking about some more outfield uh, schematics. He's getting himself focused, ready to play the second quarter already. Um, and he's definitely not going to get caught for a delay of game. Yeah, no, he's definitely, like, I think, you know, all uh, all throughout opening weekend, he was doing the same. He was he was sort of in his zone. He knows his jobs. He knows what he's got to do. And it's just 100% focused there. And, uh, yeah, you know, leading his team by example. So there's Purple winning the ball forward. Gorman was looking for the shot but got pushed out well there. Matt Tatton coming across, feeding to Hardy behind the back. Lovely finish. There we go. That's the bit of spark that Hustle wanted. That's what they were looking for. It's come through Will Hardy. The face-off is not huge in this game in terms of the number that they take. But we saw there with Paul Chapman winning that forward and giving his team a great opportunity to uh, get that first attack of the, on the board and you know there we go save from Dwell Bang the other end and then we're going the opposite way yet again here's some transition across Tommy Kirkland the Scottish wizard and what an assist what an assist that is that is pure sixes goal for you that is pure transition goal like you say Tommy Kirkland there with the assist somebody you'd never see up in that end of the field putting up the the perfect pass and and Hustle have made a really great start to this. Josh Simpson some pink there, making sure, keeping them honest. But yeah, that, I think that was a great example of what Sixes Lacrosse is all about. That was a finish and a half from Simpson Pink as well. I mean, you know, he, what he did there, which was brilliant, is he, he was in his right hand, but he got his stick to the middle of the field to finish. And um, we just call into Tommy Kirk on the Scottish Wizard. Obviously, he played for Scotland in 2010, but then he's, he switched to England. And uh, I think that's why, why that nickname might have stuck. Yeah, I'm sure as an ex teammate, I'll probably let you off that one. But, uh, it, he's, he is definitely somebody out here who can, who, you know, you're kind of looking down that hustle team, somebody to make a difference for them, somebody to come forward.
Is that right? Well, sure. And lucky again, he got himself into a nice position. It was the shot, you know, he'd got himself free in the middle. But like again, you know, up, uh, up against backs, they've got to find those corners. They're trying to hit those bottom corners. Yeah, fighting for the middle of the field is one part of it. I think actually making sure you get a quality shot off with your hands free is the second part. Um, not quite sure he had his hands free completely, but I'll tell you what, um, he did a really good job of getting to the middle of the field. Short on the shot clock time here. Do the guys know? Pink gets one away, but it runs wide now at the back. And these are the opportunities that I think the hustle really got to take pride in. That was a great defensive set. They now get to go down the other end of the field yet again. And, you know, this is what we want to see from the guys. these guys stepping up. Hardy again, what a finish. Kirkland to Hardy again, combination coming through. And hustle have closed the game to one. I'll be honest, Sean, I thought going into that after that first quarter, this could have been, you know, that game, this game could have disappeared very quickly away from the hustle, but they're fighting back, which is great to see. Yeah, I think Tat and Tat, tat and got the step out. I think Joe was looking for a. Looking for a foul somewhere, but not given. And Roy's back in the attack. That's like open season, seeing a goalie that far out the goal. Um, there you go. Toy, Toybo makes amends. Nice save. It was good height for him, but uh, got himself up well. Another transition opportunity and another finish from the hustle. This, this is their opportunity to really get themselves into this now. This is what we said, you know, all the power, all the firepower that Roy's have up top. They also need to be aware in defence. They need to, you know, do do the basics, make sure they're covered. And at the moment, they're, you know, I mean, not that they're giving away easy goals. The hustle are really coming, you know, with some great attacking plays, but they just need to step it up a little bit. But, uh... Well, that's exactly... Roy, Hun, yeah, yeah, Huns with the response there really was. He, uh, he really kind of just recognised it. He, he was in a great shooting position, liked his own range. And, uh, and finish that ball nicely. But yeah, I think you're spot on with that analysis, Sean, that it, it really is going to come down to a lot of little things. Just like that. Yeah, feed was open, but uh, just not quite executed. Just down too low. So, just looking at that, the, the defensive distances that the hustlers are setting themselves out at there, especially when they've got the shooters that the Rise have, you'd like to see them take another couple of steps up there. I'll be listening out to see if Dwobeng's actually calling his defenders to take another couple of steps because that's just inviting the shot, that's inviting the pressure, and it's not going to work well for them. Yeah, I think it's some way, you know, that. Here we go, transition. They've got numbers. Russell goes by himself. Yeah, doesn't need anybody else. Through the fake a couple of times and then straight down through the middle. Another finish there. This game's really opening up now, Sean. I think, um, you know, there's, there's an opportunity where they're, they're just going blow for blow. If you work again, Tom for it finds... There's Alex Davidson popping up there and uh, takes a good feed. That was a great finish. That was a, that was Will Hardy just. The, the Rise know that Hardy's a threat with the ball in his stick, so they're really looking to hedge out towards him, but. What was really smart there is he played head up and he saw that look on the backside and it was a great finish on the quick stick. Equally as well there, Ryan Huns just made his, made his defender look a little bit silly there. Throw the fake for the big shot and then just took himself inside. 
Yeah, the game's, the game's moving at quite a pace now. Rise nine, hustle seven. One minute 40 to go in the half. Dan Jones comes inside. Big save, Baxter reactions, got down well. And again, Sean, in this game, we're seeing teams putting up more goals in the first half than we have previously in other weeks. And I, a few people are asking the question around here at the fly this weekend. Why is that? My take on it, I think the guys are just getting used to the, used to the pace of the game and the, the locations that they can get to. And they're just a lot more comfortable. It's also, like you say, it's uh, more games with their teammates. You know, these are, these are teams that have been put together specifically for this competition. They turned up on opening weekend and many of them had, you know, never played together before. You know, they, they had no sort of team links, but now, you know, they're starting to develop. They're starting to understand each other more. And, you know, it's being shown on the field in the sort of step up in quality, the sort of connections that we're seeing being made. 40 seconds on the game clock. Joyvane saves from Russell. They'll get a reset on that shot clock, which will be very similar to the game clock. It's going to be about 30 seconds each. Yeah, I can hear Baxter shouting from behind, use the full 30, use the full 30. So they're thinking about game management already, but you know, I think that's a really experienced kind of conversation that they're having on the field with each other. But Russell's, well, Russell's not bothered about that. He, he saw his shot, he was going to take it. I'd really like to see Hustle take a couple extra steps up defensively, just to give themselves a little bit more opportunity to actually maybe slide a little bit earlier and give themselves an opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to defend a 30 second um, full possession. Nice little bit of pressure there on Zoe Beng on the, on the buzzer shot from Baxter, but uh, saved and we go into our halftime break, Rise leading 10-7. Yeah, I think they, they really made a good effort on that in that second quarter. And, um, you know, Hustle have got a lot to be proud of in that. Um, I think it'll be interesting what comes out of the halftime conversations that the coaches are having with their team because, you know, this game is, is perfectly balanced right now. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm not sure everybody coming into this game thought that it would be this close at halftime. I think a lot of people had really, with them being the one seed and the four seed, had kind of, you know, booked Rise's ticket into the into the final but Hustle are, are, are really stepping up right now the, they've got you know some guys who are, are, are absolutely capable of delivering and and they're doing that so far I think uh, it's we keep saying it's going to come down to a lot of little plays and um, now the sun's back out I think uh, it's it's really interesting to see how the, how the Rise are going to step up next half yeah like I say as we're just watching a few replays here um you know, again, if we look down the scorers, you know, Rise, again, are going to sort of that Alex Russell, that Ryan Huns, they're, they are, you know, they're pulling out the plays for Rise when they're needed, you know, just as Hustle get themselves back within one or two, they respond instantly with something quick. And I think that if they can, you know, what can, what can Hustle do to, like you say, maybe step up a bit more, try and, you know, get out how can they you know make them pass it to somebody else how can you make them you know make one it one one extra pass bring somebody else in um so you know just try to unsettle things a little bit yes yeah, it's, it's a game of runs sean and um you know we we saw the rise have an early run hustle responded back with a run um there's those their goals for hustle actually came through transition as i said a couple of times now i would love to see hustle kind of take a couple extra steps out on the defensive possessions and make Rise work, you know, 25, 30 seconds in deep into possessions before they either take a poor shot or they get that they get that cause turnover. Um, and I think that's that's potentially something they could be looking at and having a conversation at. But, um, you know, the, the shooting against these two fantastic goalkeepers has been really good uh, in that first quarter, or was that first half, should I say. Yeah, just thinking back to, to opening weekend again, I think we're in a similar situation in this game where, you know, Rise were in Rise were in front at half time and they had a good goal lead and Hustle just came out in that second half. They got themselves on a little run, they got some energy and it pulled the game right back into um, right back into contention and I think Rise took it ten nine right at the end of play and I think that's what they got to look at. They've got to look, you know, we're not we're not out of this. We can be straight back into this. And um, yeah, like I say, probably just some. It's just it's uh, just some little tweaks. It's nothing major. It's you know, there's there's no there's no real problems there. You just need to make a few little adjustments. 
Yeah, I mean, I was just watching that replay back with uh, with Ryan Huns when he when he faked out Will Shirt, and um, you know he got himself to the middle of the field. And what stood out to me was there was no slide to the middle of the field. And I think I would, let's you know if Hustle can either take that extra step and send that slide a little bit earlier, they might give themselves a little bit more possession to be a bit more assertive in defence. Um, that is going to help restrict the firepower that we're seeing through Rise. But um, you know, this this game, just like every game that we've seen so far, is perfectly poised. And as we say here, this is our uh, second men's semi-final of the day. We uh, had our first game earlier today at 2pm where we saw uh, Forge come through in that one against Swift. Uh, they took down Swift, who'd gone through all of opening weekend unbeaten and they'd, you know, come into that game. But Forge uh, took them down and booked their place in the final. So. Um, it's going to be Forge versus either Rise or Hustle, and we'll find out in about 15, 16 minutes' time. Yeah, and we mentioned it earlier, and I don't really want to repeat it, but, you know, how can the coaches impact this tight game, utilising the timeouts? They're going to get a fresh set for the second half, um, and I really think there's, there's something in that, that even though they are only 30 seconds, they absolutely can try and make some changes, impact, um, with either player changes or tactical changes or whatever it might be to uh, to try and give their team that little advantage because this is a game of little margins and they all start to add up to a bigger picture at the end of the day. So we're just about set for the start of the third quarter. So Paul Chapman will go back to the face-off for Hustle and Chris Hockey joining him for Rise. Yeah, so it's good to see Chris Hockey back out there. He's been injured for a little while. It's great to see him actually back out on the field. So, uh, you know, I think for him, it, this is his first competitive across for a little while. But, uh, you know, I think he's absolutely out there enjoying every second of it. Great face-off win there, Chapman, and picking up the ground ball. Good start for Hustle. What can they do on their first possession? This is Dan Jones. Looking up against Matt Tatton. Comes inside on his right hand. Yeah, I think back, back looked look like he had that one covered, but, you know, uh, Dan Jones really kind of uh, being a bit of a catalyst for his team in attack and, um, you know, absolutely going to start, you know, seeing some guys step up in the second half. And I, I, I can tell you now, I think he'll be one of them. Rise losing ball there and Baxter already organising his troops but Kirkland goes round hockey straight to goal. It's a terrific save from Baxter again. Really, you know, one on one, just stood up strong, kept his position and he set his team off. Ryan Hunt's one handed. Yeah, that's a bit of a Hunzi special that one. You know, you, you know he's got it in his locker. I've seen them go in the top corner as well. That was a really smart shot there from Polk. He, he, he had backs the screen. He got really unlucky in the end. Um, but yeah, he, he, I think he, he just used his stick as leverage to shoot around. I think it was Russell. And um, I think they were unlucky to hit the post. And obviously that's caused the turnover. But, um, you know, that was really smart lacrosse. Rise losing ball there. Definitely hear there's a um, lot more chat out there from Rise. I think I've noticed at the start of this start of this quarter they're really loud, really vocal. And but unfortunately on the play the interception poke, he's got Kirkland's option. Tries to pick up the rebound. Yeah, that was a great that was a great second phase play. Um, you know Kirkland really sprinted up there to try and join Poke and um, yeah, you know, kind of re was rewarded in the end for his hustle for the hustle. Be a hard life for a goalie as well. Sometimes you know you make that one-on-one -on -one save, you think you've pulled it out of the bag, and then someone just pops up and puts in the uh, puts in the rebound. There's another little, little margin. That was a fantastic little one-on-one -on -one save on, on the inside from Dwobeng. And we talk about the goalkeepers having an impact. That was a real impact for for him and his team there. Oh, lovely bottom corner. Great finish, great accuracy. That's what exactly what Hustle were looking for. 
they are stepping up in this third quarter, Sean. There's an old lacrosse cliche, those third quarters win games. I think Hustle are really kind of, you know, making that pay. And um, I tell you what, that was a great save. It trickled over the line, and I think they might call a crease here. It's going to be a crease before the the ball crossed. It took it took so long to cross, yeah, that yeah, they were in the crease before, by the time it got over. Yeah, Dwoben got a huge piece on the ball there. Um, and again, that is the second save on the bounce, and it's giving their team some momentum. And this is the possession to tie the game. Absolutely. This could be it straight away. 4.52 left in the third. Hustle could go tied. And these are your two goal swings, three goal swings that we're seeing. And, um, you know, Baxter's like, anything you could do, I can do better. And he's making game stopping saves as well. The intensity, the levels at the moment, the, there's a real there's a real spice to things now. You can see that there, Baxter was determined to take the ground ball, came under immense pressure as well, but rode it out. Yeah, you can really actually feel it right now. These teams know this game's on a knife edge. And, um, you know, it, it's just great to see. This is this is what this game has given us. Uh, something completely different. And again, third save on the bounce from Dwobang. He's really stepping up in this third quarter. Keepers on top, loving it. Yeah, no one no one wants to go into the, fi into the uh, final day tomorrow, not in the final match. You know, all the teams are staying on site here. Everyone's, you know, seeing each other. Nobody wants to give anybody an edge and nobody wants to, you know, give anything away. And I think what would be really interesting, like, both of these teams have had, I think, about four hours off from the first game this morning, through lunch, and then to this game now. And, you know, depending on what they've been doing whilst they've been on site here, in terms of their recovery, in terms of maybe a little bit of that downtime, what they've managed to eat themselves and get themselves actually ready for this game. Because we know from some of the data that we've been collecting previously, these guys are burning around, I think it's about 300 calories a game. So have they refueled? Have they got the energy to go? And we're going to see that at the end of this third quarter and into the fourth quarter, which team has really set themselves up in performance to go and, uh, go and play. Yeah, again, maybe fine margins, but Hustle played before Rise this morning. So they've had, they've had an extra hour. Like a little ball there that just passed it to the referee but got away with it. Dan Jones fires up. Tip, tip shot in there. That, that, was, that was, you know, Dan Jones on a plate. He, he was catching the ball to the middle of the field with his left hand. I uh, think he might want that one again. Yeah, that was, you know, that may have been the big moment. That was the, that was the, uh, the shot to tie and instead Rise gets to go down the other end. 2.40 on the clock. Robinson on ball, well defended out by Fliss, but yeah, feedback from Russell into Pomfrey who came round from behind. Yeah, it's a little no-look feed, that's the little bit of class that Alex Russell brings. And a bit of class from Flisk, on the, you know, in response, you know, Dan Flisk is an engine, he'll run and run and run all day. Um, and in this sixes, he's, he's absolutely finding his way, his way to finish, he's finding that little sweet spot. That was just a case of him looking at the player who was up against him, one-on-one -on -one match up, and he went, I've got you, and he did. He came inside, breezed, breezed past him, and then made a really nice finish. And what's great, you got him there on ball now, down the opposite end, defending him, doing the stint on the opposite side of the ball as well. And with the slide. Great spin from Pomfret there, the balance on that to keep his feet before he shot. Going toe-for-toe -to -toe yet again, these two teams. Looking to double the ball. Jones doing well to hold. He's opened up a feed. He's cool. called for a ward just as he got the feed off. That's tough. I think, you know, they definitely... He, he, once he gets that double, he's got to get his head up. He's got to look to be looking to move the ball. Um, he's, done, he's done his job as the initiation dodge. Big work, Baxter, look for the pick-up, but Hardy makes the check, looks for the behind the back, there's two running towards, Baxter coming towards. Told you it was open season. <laughs> <laughs> no one's giving anything away here. They weren't going to miss that opportunity to have a go. So we're going to see that penalty now. I think just one thing, I've started to see Hustle, and I don't know whether it's just me seeing it myself and, and, and encouraging it myself, but... 
they are starting to slide a little bit more proactively and I think that's really helping their defence in this quarter um, you know we'll, we'll be see what comes out of this extra man opportunity but uh, I think there's a fair chance there might actually be two down here they both, uh, they both took a nice swing at Baxter as he came through. So it's going to be Dan Flisk taking a penalty, which uh, Hustle won't particularly want that at this stage. Yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be a minute. That was another inside no look little uh, feed from Russell and you know that come off the post. Yeah, nice let off there. They've got they're just behind the game clock, so they they are they are going to have to take a shot here. And there's going to be a going to be seven or eight seconds after their last shot. They just run it down. Got seven on the shot clock. Kirkland coming round by himself. Great individual. Lovely stuff. Not so. <laughs> Again, not somebody you'd expect to come up with goals like that, but doing doing uh, doing the work on both ends. Do you know that is the classic example of a defender knowing what an, what a def other defender doesn't want, and he tiptoed that crease and he went all the way around and put it in the back of the net. But as I say, the they were just out of the game clock, and it gave Roy's the other the opportunity to go back up the other end and uh, stick another one on them. But we have a two-goal game going into the final quarter here. Roy's thirteen. Hustle 11. It's once again all to play for. Keep saying it, keep going on, but both teams are in the game and we know how quick this can change. Absolutely. And I think the more we look at this game, and it's just so end to end, and the possessions are easily shared. I, I know we keep saying this as well, it's, it's fine margins and lots of little things. You know, I think in that quarter we had Duo Beng with three consecutive saves. That then gave his team the impetus to go down the other end. And Really interesting what's going to happen in this last eight minutes because you feel like this could go either way. Um, you know, I think what Hustle have done so far is really limit the opportunities that we potentially saw in the playing game this morning uh, that Rise were creating because, you know, they, they put up over 20 goals this morning. They've done a great job, that, you know, already. But we are seeing more goals. Um, and, you know, the coaches are really want to be trying to drive forward the uh, their teams and, and you know drag them over the line for the last eight minutes so 40 se 45 seconds left in the quarter time looks like coach Carr has given all the messages he wants to give he's left it to his team for the final 30 seconds yeah and you know what Sean I think that's a bit of the plan do review these guys have gone through because they we saw a lot in the first weekend in July was teams getting caught um, for the delay of game because they're, you know, they're used to having that extra time to have that conversation um, in quarter breaks and timeouts. And I think they, they've been really poignant with their points now and they're really trying to just you know, get out ahead. You know, the, the both teams are now back out with over 10 seconds left to go. And you know, that's part of the learning that's gone on with this weekend. There's lots of learning that's gone on, not just from a, from a team's point of view, from a player's point of view, but right across the board. Yeah, as I say, you know, I think we saw a case and example um, in our first semi-final with Forge. You know, they with it, you know, the team that finished bottom from that opening weekend, you know, the amount of work and um, uh, speaking to the uh, the uh, coaching staff of Forge that, you know, they did a lot of work between those two weekends to, you know, how can you make improvements? And it is stuff like that, you know, making sure you're ready, making sure, you know, you've got your subbing on, you know exactly your sort of methods. And those are the gains that you can make from that weekend to this weekend. And it's, it's uh, there to, for people to see on the field. Yeah. And... You know, we saw that opening face-off. Chapman won it again. He's giving his team an opportunity to go play attack. Um, again, just because they're now down our end of the field, I, I just want to see Hustle take a couple of extra steps. But Shirt doing a great job stepping up there on Huns. And, you know, he got in his hands to stop him shooting. Um, he just got, almost got unlucky with the turnover there. Shot but, clock gone and they're going to try and win the ball. They're yeah, they've got numbers the if they got, got it. Numbers. Flisk into Hardy. Goes round Huns. Oh, yeah. it's excellent work. Excellent decision making. Yeah, he could have passed that, but do you know what? I think it had got knocked down, so he did the right thing by backing himself there. Um, and now the back hustle uh, within one.
They've got numbers. Here we go, here we go, Kirkland. Done well to keep it in. I don't, I don't, yeah, he was, um, he was uh, trying to push the ball quick. I don't think his teammates were particularly wanting it. Yeah, he's a smart player. He knows the rules. He's going to going to keep the ball in bounds, get his feet back in bounds to pick before he picks up the ground ball. Got three, three on the shot clock, though. And they've just coughed it up. Hustle are always there. They're just behind, but they can't, they still can't pull themselves back level. They can't get themselves on parity. And you'll see, you know, if they could just get themselves level, you'll see what might happen in the game. Yeah, I think they're really working now on trying to get the right matchups out there. Um, you know, the right personnel marking who, and, um, you know, it's really kind of coming into it. Great work to Obeng. Coming up with another save as well, keeping his hustle team in this. And again, once more. And this is it, you know, he's just, that's, that's as good as scoring the game winner, making those two back-to-back -back saves. Two double saves, Dan Jones comes forward. It's a little bit wasteful there. They've, you know, you've just, you've just seen off two possessions. Got the ball in the attacking third to go level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got a little bit loose in the last kind of minute and a half at the start of this fourth quarter. The pressure's on. You can feel the tension in the shots. People are just a little, getting a little bit tight. Yeah, that's going to stay rise. Sorry, that's going to go. to say hustle. Sorry, I think it got deflected off the back. So again, this is something that the guys have had to get used to with the rule changes of the shot not being the nearest to the ball, but actually it's just a who it came off last. And I think the hustle could, if they're smart with this, they've got a full 30 seconds to capitalise. Yes, tight game. Josh Pope there, I think, coming round with the shot. Yeah. Really, really little, nice little, sort of, tried to just sort of like confuse things a bit there, you know, they were just sort of stacking the men and uh, putting a bit of pressure on the defence. He had a free play because he knew the foul was coming, so he had the free play and uh, he, he absolutely took advantage of it. Yeah, and ball out again, wasted ball and uh, all the pressure's on Team Roy's at the moment, I think. Yeah, and Duo Beng showing that not even, only can he do it between the pipes, but he can also do it that defending on his own back line as well. So we are tied at 13 goals each. We have 350 left in the fourth quarter. Backs to pulling up with the save again. Like I said, keepers on top. These are two England international goalkeepers, and they're showing it in this game today. I'm going to say it now, Sean. I've, I've got a feeling for overtime in this one been denied overtime so far today we've seen a few one goal games yeah. not quite sure what there's yeah, been a, there's like a foul in there i think there's also potentially someone in the crease it could be might be simultaneous or something i'm not quite sure what's going on but i just go back to making my bold brass call about overtime i just think purely because of the scoreboard situation right now but also I've just not seen in the last kind of eight to ten minutes either team really want to take ownership of this game. Um, it's, so it's going to come down to small things. And when the game's tied with three and a half to play, um, you know, I've just got that feeling. Yeah, Hustle are unfortunately going to find themselves a man down here and have to do some, some really tough work on defence. Shots gone wide from Huns this time and uh, that's, a, that's a, a real breather for Hustle now. Yeah, and, and it's nice a reflection of where the game is at. You know, I, we stood behind that shot. It just pulled a little bit. And this guy's getting a little tense in the, ran, in the hands. And, in the, and, and um, you know, that's kind of, that's, again, going to come down to some of the small things. And a flat, that's, again, another example, like a little bit of a, you know, maybe a little bit of a half force look. Um, Hardy had sort of done all the hard work to sort of beat the press and... And then, yeah, just looking, looking, looking for a feed that wasn't really on. Yeah, the, the, the team that gets the quality back now, I think, is going to go on and win this game. You know, and, it's, and we spoke about it earlier today. It's that experience. Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the guy who's, or the, you know, the, the, the couple of guys who are actually going to take hold of this game, make some good decisions, use the full 30-second shot clocks? Because um, the way we're looking right now, 
There's probably five possessions left in this game. Yeah, so Hustle now on ball, opened up for Kirkland. Instead of taking the shot, he's gone for the feed. Recovered, are they going to get a reset on that shot clock? No. No, it wasn't, wasn't judged to have touched a riser there. Yeah, no possession, no possession gain, so the clock stays in force and Hustle quickly back into, uh, into their D set. Fliss got out well there to, to Russell, you know, he was just looking to drive through the middle, try and open things up, but he got out really strong. And they forced the intercept. They got a two on one here. Gorman on ball. Oh, they had the numbers. You really want them to use the numbers there. Yeah, the, um, the feed, you know, the, the feed, the pass, the pass was the option. But that's what the pressure does. We've got 135 left in our second semi final, tied at 13 goals apiece. fighting for a place in the fly finals and Russell gives Royce the lead. That's what we're talking about, that experience, stepping up, Alex Russell, we, we did it time and time again for his team in the first weekend and when it counts the most, he's doing it yet again. Timeout call, Coach Patterson, smart move there, you know, really needs to just refocus his hustle side now with uh, 114 in the game and 18 left on their shot clock. What are they going to look to do now from this play? They might have talked about something previously of having something set. You know, they, they might have a, a set play that they want to go and run. Um, I just think the biggest thing for, for uh, Sam Patterson and his team is, is just to realise that they've worked themselves into this position in the game. Go capitalise on it now, guys. You've worked hard to put yourselves in this position. Make it count. Again, Coach Carr is just sending his team out. Is there. You guys know what to do. You know, work it out, sort it out yourselves. You've got it here. And the delay of game call, we were talking about it earlier. We were talking about it, about how prepared Roy's were. Hustle taking too long on the timeout. Delay of game, they've lost possession. Yeah, they're going to get one chance here because I think Rise are probably going to try and kill this full 30, take some time off the clock and really limit Hustle to an opportunity. Big save, Joy Bang. That's really important for Hustle. If I've got 52 on the clock. And there's Lee. now a too many men call against against Hustle? Yeah, it must have been. Because uh, I think it was potentially loose. Yeah, it's a loose ball and they just turned the ball over. Oh, do you know, they were man down. There's, there's only four guys out there now. So they're man down. So that must have been in possession. Uh, technical, technical foul, green card. Um, that could be it, Sean. Like I say, we've got, so there, there's going to be about, if they run down to 30, there's going to be about 15 seconds left on the clock. They need to stop the goal. Either Huns or Russell is going to have one go to win this game for, for Rise. And what Rise has done here is they've just dropped Matt Tatton right the way back to the halfway line. Like, you're not going to get transition here. Track. You're not getting transition here. Three, two, and it's the one-handed feed from Huns into Russell on the crease, puts it in, and that should be game. We've got 20 seconds here. Hustle needs to push the ball. Dan Jones can have to step and shoot. It's been closed out, double teamed. Comes out, shot goes wide. Eight on the clock, and that should be it for Rise. Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. You know, we said this is gonna come down to a couple of things. We had that technical that technical foul turnover. They had the two V one. They had the opportunity to go take this game. Um Russell puts all that ball all the way up into the, in, probably into the East Midlands and, uh, and sends it all the way. And Roy's put their place in the fly final. They were pushed all the way by Hustle. They were at them. We had tied game. We've had moments. We've had all sorts of drama going on here in those last couple of minutes. But they've seen themselves through and they'll be very pleased with their day's work. They will. They will. They're patting each other on the back, I think. Hustle, you know, they, they might see that as an opportunity missed. Um, I think, you know, there's there's definitely something in there in terms of one, the illegal procedure, not only off the timeout, but also the 2v1 that they had, and then the, the then the other illegal procedure that was out there. Like, it's lots of little things. Those three things could have gone the other way, and you know, it, we could be seeing it. We could have been seeing a different matchup in this final. I mean, we've, you know, we've seen two really thoroughly enjoyable semi-finals there. Um, Swift, in, Swift and Forge in that opening game. Forge sort of doing a little bit of an upset. And their hustle pushing Royce all the way. Drama till the end. And, um, 
you know, I think it's been a really enjoyable set of games and we're going to return to final which is going to be Rise Forge and just looking back I think that was I think that was their opening game on opening weekend and I think that went to overtime I think Forge beat them in overtime so there's definitely you know we know that it's going to be close and there's definitely Rise are going to want to overturn that defeat that they had on opening weekend yeah you, you spot on there Sean it went to overtime um, and do you know what both both these teams going into that final will really fancy their chances I think they've all learned and progressed and improved over the over the course of play um but i just want to take a moment now and ju I, I just say to the hustle team like those guys did a phenomenal job in this game um you know it came down to lots of small small margins and uh you know i think they can walk off this field head, heads held high yeah 100 percent. i mean you uh you uh, can see on this on their faces that um, uh, disappointment but that's because they know that they played a really great game they were in it all the way and you know if, um, if um, uh, they'd have taken that, you could not have said that they wouldn't have deserved to take it. You know, for, for almost, well, for almost, you know, up until that last two minutes, you know, they'd been right in the game and they fully deserved the um, uh, position that they found themselves in. Yeah, and what we're going to see now is the, these two teams probably go and do a bit of a cool down recovery, get themselves refocused, hydrated, refueled, ready to go tomorrow. I think uh, we've said it, you know, a number of times, these these guys, you know, it, it comes down to a lot of the small things whilst they're here at uh, Lillishall this weekend and making sure that they're doing the recovery and they put themselves in the best possible position to go and play tomorrow uh, is, is is crucial. Yeah, so tomorrow for our men's fly competition, there'll be the third, fourth place playoff in the morning, which will be between Swift and Hustle. And then we will be back in the afternoon for the final, the final of the fly for the men's competition it'll be the final game of the whole weekend and it'll be rise up against forge to take that first flight title yeah it's been great on it sean it's been great and um you know i think it's, it's credit to all the preparation that's gone in both with the teams the coaches the individuals the organization here at the fly is giving these guys a great opportunity to go out and just play and perform and uh you know i think this is what we want to see from our sport Uh, I think now we're going to hear from uh, winning head coach Vince Cara, coach of Team Rise. I am pitch side with Vince Cara, head coach of Rise. Talk us through that one, Vince. Uh, that was a uh, <laughs> that was a tough one. I think I think we knew Hostel had gone out and done a lot of work. They obviously I think done a lot of work between this morning and this afternoon, which is great. We kind of went a little bit blind in terms of we didn't have much kind of game footage or stuff to kind of go in with. So we had to really back our back our game plan, back our principles, and I think we did a I, I think we did a decent job of that. A little bit closer than I think we probably would have liked, and I think some up and down bits, but on the whole, I think we've got to be happy going into the final tomorrow. Now you had a really big win this morning against Swift who are arguably the favourites for this. That was a harder game wasn't it? This one? I think so. I think so. And I think it came down to decision making in the middle of the field. I think the beauty of this morning was we almost got out ahead and we knew from the first weekend that actually we were we were four up against them twice the first week. And we, we knew we didn't finish that game off. So we knew an opportunity this morning and this afternoon I think as the game got close, decision making dropped, and that was probably the reason why we probably feel it was very, it was so close, and lots of us think reflect on and going into tomorrow. Now that fifteenth goal was absolutely crucial, holding up the play to the very end. I think it was in the thirteenth second that goal that really sealed the game. What are the most important tactical um, advice based on the sixes format? I think I think it comes down to decision making. It comes down to your shooting. Shoot, I think we, we I think we showed the positive this morning and the negative of how of how shooting can be in terms of it's really difficult to take bad shots because it's, it's instant turnover so you've got to really be it's a, it's a real pressure now for this different than normal game on that and I think tactically that's probably the biggest thing I think as well obviously the five format it's it's unforgiving it's so up and down and I think you you can't give transition away either way and you've got to try and play this game five and five or else you're going to get caught out one way or another. The game's really swing now, you've got Forge in the final tomorrow, what do you do between now and then? Rest, recover, <laughs> the lads are already off recovering and stretching, I think we've got a lot to think about, myself and Gavin have to sit down and work out a game plan, we've got to really work out how we want to approach it and I think we've got to make sure the lads are in tip top shape, they need to go out and 
and spend some time recovering, resting, stretching. We've got sessions tonight, sessions now, and, and then probably some time in the morning just to get ourselves in the right place. And, and again, it'll be about executing the game plan and putting in a performance, and we'll see what happens. We won't go too deep into your tactics. Um, and your thoughts on the Sixers format as a whole? I love it. I think I think it's exciting. I think it's great. I was having a good chat this morning about. I think also it's an opportunity to to really develop probably fundamentals of the game that maybe get missed when you play in a bigger format. So I think that's really good. I think it's going to be good for the sport. I like there's a lot of crossover with other sports as well. So hopefully it's better to watch. Um, I think it's definitely more exciting. I think which is great and obviously faster. I've heard it's sort of compared as the 2020 of cricket. Um, do you see it with the Olympic potential? Oh, I hope. I mean, I hope so. I, I mean, that would be amazing. I mean, watch, obviously, and it's ironic. I watched the opening ceremony and I sat I was like, this could be pretty cool if we were in that as well, right? So I, I, th I think it would be really good. I, I really hope so. I'd, I'd love nothing more than for us to get on the wider stage. It's obviously such a good game. We just need to find a way of making it a bit more open and uh, kind of everyone can see it. Vince, really appreciate your time. Good luck in the final tomorrow. My pleasure. Thank you.